Hi and welcome to part 3 of our Bluetooth tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to be uh, constructing a remote control. So in this case here I've got myself a standard Domobot design robot. And you can find the instructions to build this on the website. And a very simple remote control. Now this remote control consists of a single motor connected through to port A. And what we're going to do here is we're actually, rather than driving the motor, we're going to measure how far this motor moves. And so I'm actually going to physically move it. So when we start it off, we were going to, we're going to be sending Bluetooth um, information from this device down to our robot, and that's going to control it. And how far this turns, how many degrees this turns, this motor, will determine the speed that that robot goes. So when we turn it on to start off with, we're going to be at zero degrees, which means our robot is going to be travelling at zero percent power. Then as I move this lever up, let's suppose, suppose I put it up to about there, 45 degrees of the motor here will then send the number via Bluetooth, number 45, down to our robot, and then that will make that robot there go at 45 percent power. Alright, so how do we actually put this all together? Let's have a look at a program. Going to open up a new program. Again, we're going with the master and slave idea of the Bluetooth, and so I'm going to start off with the master. So, create a new program called master. With this particular tutorial, we're going to be relying very heavily on data hubs and wiring information between blocks. If you haven't done a lot with uh, data hubs before, there are two really good books I'd recommend. They are The Art of Lego Mindstorms Programming and The Lego Mindstorms NXT 2.0 Discovery Book. Both are very uh, excellent resources if you want to learn more about um, using data hubs. Alright, so looking at the master program. The aim of this program is to read in how far we have physically moved that motor connected to port A and then transmit that number down to our second robot. So to start with, I need to actually measure how far that we, that motor has turned. I'm going to come down to this one that says sensors and grab the one that says rotation sensor because we're using this not so much as a motor but as a rotation sensor. So I'll pop that in the front there. And what this will do, it'll measure how far port A has turned. We're not going to worry about any of the other bits and pieces down the bottom here. We're instead going to focus on the data hub. And the thing that interests me is this bottom one here which says degrees. And this out of this little um, plug will send, will tell me how many degrees that motor has turned. I want to take that number and I want to send it via Bluetooth. So I come up to Actions, Send Message. Now this one here we're going to set up on connection slot 1, just like we did in part 1 and part 2. The message type we're going to choose number because we're going to send numbers but this time I'm not just sending a set number, I'm not sending the, the random number 27 or 58. I want to be sending how far the wheel has turned, sorry how far that motor has turned. So in this case I need to use the data hubs. If I come into my Bluetooth block, drop down to the very bottom here and click on that and that will open up my little data hub. And so what I can do if I run my mouse down here, that's where I can put in a connection, I can put in a mailbox, I can put in text, I can put in number or logic. The one we're after here is this second from the bottom number. And what I'm going to say is send the degrees to the Bluetooth. So I'm just going to go click, click, click. And what these two blocks do now, we're going to take a measurement, how far the aim motor has turned, and I'm going to send that number out via Bluetooth. Now it's no good just sending it once, we need to be constantly sending it every time we need to take a new reading and send the new value and that allows us to constantly change that remote control and change the speed of the robot. So I'm going to put this whole thing inside a loop. Place a loop at the front, draw a big box around those ones, highlight them all and drag them in. Alright, so there's our master program. We take a reading from port A, how far that motor has moved. I send that number of degrees out via Bluetooth, connection slot 1, mailbox 1. And then I loop back to the start and I repeat, I take a new reading, send that one, then take a new reading and send that one, take a new reading and send that one, and so on. So we're constantly just sending how far that motor has turned. Alright, let's put that one in. and download. There we go. 
So the master ones, that's the easy one. The slave one, that's a little bit trickier. Let's bring up a new program. So I'm going to go back to my lobby and create a new program. This time here I'm going to call this one slave. So now what the slave has to do, it has to receive that Bluetooth message and then it has to then make the wheels of the robot go at the same speed as the number being sent through. So for example, if that master was sending the number 58, our slave then needs to receive that number 58 and make the wheels drive forward at 58% power. So the first thing we need to do is receive a message. Now unlike part 2 where we used a wait block, that wait block waited for a specific Bluetooth number. With this one here, we're going to get all sorts of different numbers constantly coming through, so we can't use that wait block. So instead what we're going to use is come up here into the sensor and grab the one that says receive message. If I put the receive message down and I'm going to expand out the data hub by clicking at the bottom here. So I run my mouse down here, we've got mailbox, text in, number in, logic in, message received, yes, no, text out, number out, and this is the one that we're interested in. This will actually tell us what the number is that we've received. Problem is, however, what do we do if we haven't received anything? We don't want the program just to, to hang up on us. So what we need to say is we need to keep checking until we receive a message, any message at all. So what I need to do is I need to put this into a loop where I am constantly checking the Bluetooth to see if I have received a message. Now at the moment this is just going to keep looping forever because this has been set up to loop forever. Rather than looping forever, I want to keep looping until I receive a message. So what I'm going to place with this one here is I'm going to change this one down to logic. And we see the logic there. Wait until I receive a true. And if I look again at my data hub as I roll my mouse down, there's a nice little plug here that says message received. So if there's no message received, this will be outputting a false statement. And as soon as I receive a message via Bluetooth, I'm going to it's going to output a true. So if I connect this up into my loop, what this now tells us is that we keep looping, keep looking for a message, keep looking for a message until I receive a message. When I receive a message, this will go true and we'll break out of this loop. All right, I need to quickly change this one from text to number because I'm re receiving a number and I'm receiving it on mailbox one. So this here then says, all right, I've got myself a message. What do I need to do with that information? Well, what we want to do is we want to drive this robot forward in a straight line at that speed. So I'm going to grab a move block. Very important that I change this to unlimited. This allows us to constantly update how fast our robot's going and give it nice good control. At the moment, down in our configuration panel, we've set this to be 75% power. This means that robot will drive forward at 75% power at all times. However, we want this number to be changing as we go along. So I'm going to drop down my data hub there, and I'm going to take the number that I've just received and I'm going to wire it into the power level. By doing that, by using the data hub, it'll actually ignore this particular entry in my configuration panel. Doesn't matter what I've got in here, it's more important what number I send through. So let's suppose the master sends through the number 27. That number gets sent through here, gets piped through to this particular plug, and our robot will drive forward at 20% power. That number that we send gets changed to, say, 58, and again, that number will go through here and make our robot drive forward at 58% power. Like before with the master, at the moment, this will take one Bluetooth message, make the robot drive for a little bit, and then it's all over. What we need to be doing is constantly coming back to the start and checking for new Bluetooth messages. So we're going to put this whole thing inside a loop. There we go. Wait until I receive a Bluetooth message. Once I have received a Bluetooth message, send that number and make that motor go forward at that speed. Again, I want to emphasize that this must be on unlimited. We need that one on unlimited, otherwise it won't work for us. All right, let's plug in our dome bot and download this one. We need to connect the two devices via Bluetooth. You can see how to do that in part one of the tutorial, so I'm just going to do it now.
Alright. Devices are connected via Bluetooth. I'm going to start the slave running. And I'm now going to start the master running. So at the moment, we are sending commands between the two. Because I haven't moved this motor here, it's still reading zero degrees. I haven't moved it, so it's still on zero degrees. I'm sending zero degrees to the robot, so the robot's saying I need to move forward at zero percent power. As I slowly move this one around, it'll now start sending higher numbers, and then that robot will start driving forward faster and faster. So let's give it a go. Moving slowly, moving faster. Not bad. Alright, I'll turn that off. So that seemed to work quite well. As I moved it along, it changed speeds. Let's just do it once more. Let's see if I can pick that speed right up. So if I give it a good bump, And back to zero. There we go. Problem arises, however, when we start taking it backwards. I've pushed it forward, those numbers went up, and my robot drove forward. Now, if I take it backwards, however, it keeps driving forward. So, what's actually happening here? When we send those Bluetooth commands, when I push it forward, our robot drives forward, we're sending positive numbers. However, when I push it backwards, I start sending it negative numbers. The master, let's flick to the master program, is sending negative numbers. So let's say I take it back 20 degrees, it'll send the number minus 20. However, when the slave receives that number, receives that number minus 20, and sends it through to the motor, this motor power level only accepts numbers between 0 and 100. It doesn't understand minus 20. What does minus 20 power mean? So instead of trying to figure that out, what it does, it just ignores the minus. and just says, oh, must be 20. I'll just drive forward 20% power. What we need to do, however, <coughs> is to tell the robot, if you get a negative number, you're actually going to be driving in reverse. Now, the way that we can do that is by using another one of these plugs on the data hub. And the one we're going to choose is this one here that says direction. If I receive a true, then the robot will drive in a forward direction. If I receive a false, it'll drive in a backward direction. So now we have to try and figure out how do I create a true or false based on a positive or negative number. And the way that we're going to do that is by using a data block and using the compare. I'm going to compare this number. And I'm going to now ask the question, is this number, is number A, greater than zero. If I take this number out and wire it into the A slot, you'll see it's now greyed out a little bit, we're now asking, is the number that has been sent, is it greater than zero? If it's greater than zero, it must be a positive number, I can send out the bottom here, out of the bottom part of this data hub, a true. Let's suppose that my master sends a number 47. That number 47 gets compared. Is 47 greater than zero? Yes, 47 is greater than zero. I'm going to send a true, and by putting a true into this direction hub, it'll make the robot drive forward. Let's suppose I send the number minus 28. Minus 28 goes into here. Is minus 28 greater than zero? No, that's false. That's a false statement. So at the bottom of this data hub, out of this plug, We'll send a false command and it'll now make our robot drive in a backwards direction. Let's download this to our slave and see how it goes. Start the program running.
start the master running. Now I'm sending zeros here because my motor is at a zero angle, so I'm sending 0% power. I'm now sending positive power forward back to zero. And now if I take it this way, I'll be sending negative numbers. And my slave will hopefully pick up those negative numbers, make that comparison, and make the robot drive backwards. There we go. Now my carpet is causing the robot to do a little bit of a turn. But generally speaking he's behaving. And there you have it. Remote control, Bluetooth from NXT to NXT. The next big challenge, and I'll leave this up to you, is how do we get our robot to turn reliably. I've used one motor to control both wheels on the robot. What you could do is have one motor controlling the B motor of my robot and one motor on my control controlling the C motor, kind of like a tank controller. Hope you found this useful. Thank you very much.